That Saturn V out there is the biggest rocket that man has ever built. It is 363 feet tall, from tail to its tip. It is five times as powerful as the Saturn I that launched Apollo 7. Its first stage alone produces seven and a half million pounds of thrust. That first stage alone is 24 times more powerful than the Atlas that lifted John Glenn into orbit. The second stage, producing by itself one million pounds of thrust. And the third stage that gives Apollo its final kick out of Earth orbit and on the way to the moon. Almost a quarter of a million pounds of thrust there. The Saturn and its spacecraft payload will weigh at launch over six million pounds, as much as a Navy destroyer. It will take the equivalent of 100 tank cars full of liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, and kerosene to fuel it. And if something went wrong on the pad, this huge sky rocket could explode with the force of a small nuclear weapon, an explosion equal to almost two and a half million pounds of TNT. Because of that, great attention has been given to getting the astronauts away from that pad in a hurry. There are three ways it could be done. The first and the fastest is to use the escape tower atop Apollo 8. The solid fuel rockets in that tower would yank the spacecraft away from the booster in less than a second. Then, as shown here in an unmanned test, the spacecraft would float back to Earth on its parachutes. But if there were time, the escape tower would not be used. Instead, once the word had been given to abandon the spacecraft, the crew would leave the white room, walk across the access arm, and then make one of two choices. If the problem were below them, an indication of trouble in the booster rocket, they and the six-man support crew from the White Room would hook onto a slide wire that would take them more than 2,000 feet away from the pad in less than 30 seconds. In this test, three dummies took that ride, down the 2,250-foot wire, hitting a top speed of 70 miles an hour before automatically breaking to a halt. At the end of the wire, armored personnel carriers would be standing by to race the men even farther away from the pad. The third method of escape is more conventional, a high-speed elevator that will take the astronauts down more than 400 feet to the base of the launch pad in just 45 seconds. There, they'd step into an escape slide, sliding down at 35 miles an hour and arriving just eight seconds later in this blast room buried below the pad. In here, as many as 20 men could stay alive for 24 hours, with enough food and air to keep them going until rescue crews got to them through the regular entrance or tunneled down to them. The blast room is small and cramped. It's hot. The temperature is never less than 86 degrees, and since it must be sealed off from the danger of fire, it can't be air-conditioned. The floor is mounted on heavy springs to help absorb the shock of an explosion, and it shakes when someone walks across it. An eerie and uncomfortable place, but a safe haven and just 90 seconds away from the Apollo 8 spacecraft. Adding to the danger of this mission after launch is that for the first time, the astronauts will be as far as three days away from the Earth. In the past, in Earth orbit, if something went wrong, the crew could return almost immediately. But once Apollo 8 is on the way to the moon, the time to get back if something important fails, the oxygen supply, for instance, gets longer and longer until it reaches that maximum of almost three days. And that's why it was not until Apollo 7's perfect mission, called 101% successful, that Apollo 8 was committed to tomorrow's flight to the moon. At Downey, California, where Apollo was made, in our full-scale mock-up, Bill Stout and North American rock will test astronaut Leo Krupp can tell us about what has been done to guarantee that everything does work. Bill? Obviously, guarantees are hard to come by in this vehicle, in this program, but Leo, how close can we come? Bill, I feel we can come very close because we've had a, a flight test program going for the past five years, starting with the Apollo uh, abort missions at White Sand, and then the Apollo uh, Saturn V launches at Cape Kennedy. Uh, these, these tests on the flight hardware are shown that the flight hardware does perform satisfactorily. In parallel with the flight test program, here at Downey, we've been doing engineering evaluations in our simulator where we take each one of the spacecraft systems and we thoroughly check it out in the simulator to make sure it performs properly and that if a failure should occur, 
the, the uh, crew will be able to take over manually, recognize the failure, take over manually, and control the vehicle. But with all these built-in safety factors, Leo, isn't it true that once they circle the moon, assuming they do, either that one engine works to bring them back or they stay there forever? That's true. The service propulsion system must function to get out of lunar orbit. However, this engine is completely redundant, and it has been flight tested and ground tested satisfactorily, and there's every reason in the world it will, to believe it will perform satisfactorily on this mission. So, no guarantees then, but at the same time, every assurance, every precaution that could possibly be provided. Walter? So tonight, three men stand on the threshold of man's greatest journey. If successful, this flight will prepare the way for man's first landing on the moon. It also will place this country well ahead in the race for the moon. It will be not only a great scientific achievement, but a significant propaganda victory. The countdown right now is exactly on schedule. And if it stays that way and weather permits, Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders begin their epic six-day journey at 7.51 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be here starting at 7 a.m. to report on the launch and every major event along the way to the moon and back. This is Walter Cronkite. Good night. This has been a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 8, brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System, the people who provide telephones and equipment that connects them. This is CBS.